Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Shaun of the Dead. Um, as you can see, I've got my uh, zombie uh, survival ammo can here. And it says, Zombie Ammo Can, are you ready? Um, well, I don't know. Am I ready? Um, I hope so. Let me get out from behind the camera and get in front of the camera. I'm going to talk to you about a couple of different things today. Uh, for one, you'll see that I have my single point sling on. I'm actually wearing a uh, attack vest instead of actually my uh, drop holster. Uh, I'm showing you another option uh, that, that you can go with. Uh, there's several different options and you would want to pick different options for different jobs. Uh, there's two things I want to talk to you about today. Uh, and that is, one is about your, your firearm, your primary firearm. Uh, as you can see, I have this tethered to me. Uh, the reason that you want to have your firearm tethered to you is because you do not want to lose your firearm. You know, it, it is going to keep you alive. So, you know, if if I don't have it tethered to me, I set it down, um, something happens, I get up to go run out, and it's not with me, now I don't have it. Now I'm stuck. So I want to make sure I have this on hand. Um, and the best way to do that is to have it hooked to me so it does not get away. Um, secondary thing, of course, is having uh, a different carry option. But also, I've switched over to this, so I have this other option for my drawing. Okay. Now, uh, that, that gives you two different options here uh, from the load, from the, uh, the, the uh, sorry, from the drop holster uh, that I normally like, that I normally prefer. Uh, this gives you a secondary option uh, that you can actually utilize from your holster here and that way you can clear something here you're still close uh, this is a really nice option I actually like that option a lot because if I'm out and I'm actually up take my uh, muzzle protector off to keep the debris, debris out of the end of the barrel off my fire suppressor so if I'm up and I'm clearing something out and I'm doing whatever it is I gotta do well now I'm getting ready to go inside of a house Honestly, in most situations, I'm not going to probably use a carbine in a house. Um, I can. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, but it's, it's going to be a little bit longer. Especially if it's not just zombies that I'm dealing with. It might be potential marauders. It might be potential people in the house that might be scared. Even if they mean me no personal harm, uh, you know, they, they're just scared. I mean, if they're scared, they're going to try to defend themselves. And if they, So if I'm coming around a corner... And they see a muzzle stick out from around the corner, they might grab it, you know. So you, if you have a firearm that is compact like your handgun, you can keep it here. You can keep it close. You can maneuver. By the time they see this, I mean, you're, you've got your hands there and your head's not too far behind. So you kind of come around your corners, check stuff out, hold it in close, keep it pointed out. You know, you want to keep it pointed away because... You know, if you don't keep it pointed out, then if there's something that happens, then you can't be ready to pull your trigger. And that's one of the important parts is to be ready to be on that trigger. Okay? Uh, so another thing is, uh, your gun goes where your head goes. If I do this, and I see something, now I've got to bring my gun over here. You don't want to do that. You always move your gun where your head goes. It's very important. Keep it pointed there. Even if you're not looking down the sights, even if you're just looking, you just keep your hand there because at least you'll have a, a you'll have a semblance of a pattern. Okay, you'll at least have an area of an effect that you can shoot at on just point shooting at within within room range because that's what you're doing is clearing rooms. Uh, so that's a nice little secondary option. Uh, another thing I wanted to go over. Um, also, this is kind of nice because you can do a quick release on your on your things. Uh, you can also have options where you have. Uh, more or less ammo, whether it be handgun or primary mags. Uh, you have an extra mag that's on top of the holster itself. Uh, so I have that at my disposal. Uh, also, you have the option of a paddle holster. This is what I used to use in competition. And I use this, this actually with this particular firearm for my competition shooting. So, uh, just to kind of give you an idea. 
So, and this is a universal holster, so it will fit this one, even though this one was actually is actually considered a compact Glock 19 versus the full size Glock 17. I prefer the 17 if I'm going to go out and go into combat um, for everyday carry. I prefer the 19 hands down. Okay, now we've touched base with one of the first things. Now let me go ahead and go over one of the second things with you. This is important. It's cog communication. Notice right here, I have a walkie-talkie. Um, and I'm going to talk to you a couple of things about this. Uh, but here's the main thing about walkie-talkies. If you, if you can communicate with your friends and your team, then that gives you the edge. Um, if somebody's someplace else, you're like, okay, I'm still good. I'm safe over here. You know, or hey, there's a bunch of things going on. You know, you want to make sure these are good. You want to make sure they always stay fully charged. You also want to work the batteries. You want to you want to use them till they die. Recharge them. You want to train your battery. You know, just like you do with your cell phone, laptop, everything else. Train your battery a few times. Uh, these are not traditional batteries. These are battery packs. That means you can't just stick a bunch of double or triple A's inside your thing. If you have some that you can, great, because you can scavenge those from the school store, and you can still find rechargeable ones. Rechargeable ones, you can actually get, um, like I have for my car, I have a little converter, and I plug it into my cigarette lighter, and it has three different ports. It has a wall outlet port, another cigarette lighter port, and it has a USB port. So whenever I go on trips, if I want, I can charge my laptop because I have one that's powerful enough to do so. Uh, so that means I can keep PDFs like the FM21-76 Survival Guide, which we'll get into this at another time, uh, different manuals and things to have. Uh, but you can get PDFs online. Go online, order all these PDFs, and just buy them. You can go to Amazon, go to Kindle, whatever you got to do. Order your PDFs. If you, have, if you have a Kindle or an iPad or whatever, uh, you can plug that, that USB into that port in your car and bam, now you have actual um, power coming through as you drive around. Because if you're bugging out driving around, you're already using some juice. So you may as well, you know, get the benefit of burning that juice that your alternator is kicking out for you. Now it's not a problem because you're using, you're, you're making it anyway, so you may as well use it. That's not going to cost you that much more fuel to, to power up your computer um, and power up an iPod or something. Um, so that's kind of a nice thing. It also makes you have a little bit of creature comfort. It makes you feel a little more human when you, you can listen to some music or look at some pictures of, of something. If you, if you feel reminiscent and nostalgic, you go, wow, okay, well, this was my family. I miss them, but at least I can still see them because I got my pictures here. Um, you know, just little things like that. Uh, plus, you can film stuff, I mean, which is kind of cool. I mean, especially with smartphones, I mean, you can video like I'm doing now for my iPhone. Um, you know, you video stuff. You can take it back and review it with people at camp. And it's like, this is what I saw. What do you guys think? So you don't have to send a whole team in. So one guy in with recon or a two-man team going in with recon. Guy goes in there, films a bunch of stuff. You're all good. Uh, so there's a lot of different options you have uh, if you have power sources. Because power is only going to be up for a maximum of three days. We'll get into that later. I just my, Mainly right now is you want to have a harness system for your primary firearm. And then you have multiple different options from in the waistband, in the pocket, uh, paddle holster, you know, on top of your actual tack vest or a drop holster uh, for your options of carry. Um, I do not recommend down the pants. It's, it's always a bad idea. Um, so that's some of the main things I wanted to go over with you. Uh, again, um, go online, order your, your stuff. Uh, get poisonous snake things. Get uh, wild edibles. Um, get your 21-76 survival field manual. Um, there's a lot of different things. This is what, what 1970, okay? Um, some of the stuff in here, I'm going to show you a little bit of this. Um, it's got about wild edibles. It's uh, what you should and shouldn't eat. How to go about testing things. Uh, what, you know, it's got things from nuclear fallout. Um, it's got how to make snowshoes in here, it looks like. I haven't even read the whole thing. How to spear fish and make dams. Uh, just all kinds of craziness. So, I mean, it's got lots and lots and lots of stuff um, in this thing. Um, just to kind of give you an idea. And it will tell you all about all the goodies in it. So, uh, that's one of the things you want to kind of look at. Is, you know, things that will teach you things. So, 
Uh, again, this is Shard of the Dead. Um, keep your firearms tethered and uh, keep your comms alive. Uh, get the get the hands free attachments if you have the opportunity, like I have for some of my comms, and that way you can communicate with your brethren and be able to uh, survive the zombie apocalypse. And hopefully, with the, uh, with your converter kits and your cars, you'll be able to you know survive the zombie apocalypse with a little bit of style and a little bit of flair and comfort. Uh, again, as always, uh, feel free to comment. Give me uh, your thoughts on um, these particular ideas. Um, this is just pretty straightforward stuff, uh, but it's things that a lot of people don't think of. Uh, one final word of thought is to carry a dump, a dump pouch on your leg, like on your thigh rig, so you can take your empty mags or your partially empty mags when you go to top off your, your gun to put your mags in your pouch. Or uh, make sure your last mag or your first mag has a tether to it that's affixed to the gun. So when you drop your first or your last mag, you will not drop it straight to the ground out of reflex. It will actually stay tethered to your gun, so you'll at least always have one mag no matter what. Uh, that's just a little helpful hint. Uh, again, that's important for survival, especially zombie survival. As always, please subscribe. Uh, give thumbs up, thumbs down. Comment. As always, stay on topic. Thanks.